Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Melwood. Guess what you're doing? You're making Gotham great again. So this just happened uh, today, um, the, uh, Monday morning London time, that uh, WikiLeaks founder appears confused in, in, at extradition hearing. So now this is what I got from Reuters, which I saw on Yahoo. So we're not getting the full story. I had to kind of go through... Um, Twitter to find people that were actually there. So what I heard from people on Twitter, Julian Assange is out of it. He doesn't seem like he's there uh, because they've been starving him. They've been trying, they've been denying him contact with people. They won't let his lawyer see him. They're doing all this stuff to, that's what happens in solitary confinement. You start losing it, man. And the intelligence community, they know this, and that's what they're trying to do. But this, this is, I just want to show you what Reuters says. And they try to just stick to the, hey, we're just going to point the facts out. And, uh, you know, this side said this, this side said that. But just see, I want to show you little key words about this. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange appeared confused at a London court hearing on Monday, struggling to recall his name and age in the first public appearance in months as he sought to fight extradition in the United States. Okay, he seemed confused and he was struggling to con con recall his name. But they don't say, why would someone do that? Why would someone, they've been held in solitary confinement, are they not being treated correctly? They don't go into that at all. But they do say this. He appeared in good health with his white hair combed back and wearing a navy suit over a light blue sweater and white shirt. Oh, he appeared in good health. So is this, this, what are they implying? This is an act. Oh, Julian, more of his Russian assetery. <laughs> it's it, you, you, well, I've shown this time and time again. So we know Reuters gets its talking points from the State Department and the CIA, right? Reuters and AP, that's, that's where they get, and that French news organization, they get their talking points from the White House, the State Department, and the CIA. And then Reuters disseminates this all throughout the, so then, and, and the AP and the French one, they all, so it all seems like it's coming from all these different sources where I've shown you, no, it does not. It comes from three places and they get their, they get their talking points from the American State Department. So anything they can show to the public to make it seem like Julian is not all there, he's corrupt, he's playing games, whatever they can, you know, all, all, those, all those smears and like, oh, he was rude to the Ecuadorian staff, that's not true. All that stuff, right? He appeared in good health. When the judge asked him at the end of the hearing if he knew what was happening, he replied, not exactly. Complained about the conditions in his jail and said he was unable to think properly. Oh, he's a whiner causing problems because they're, they're trying to starve him to death. Like, this is the kind of thing that, like, if Russia or China was treating somebody like this in one of their prisons, there would be an outcry. Look what they're doing. They're killing freedom of speech. But when we do it, it's okay. When the United States military, when the empire, when the U.S. empire does it, it's all right. And he's, he's a belly aker, right? Assange's lawyer, Mark Summers, argued that Assange's extradition hearing scheduled for February 2020 should be delayed by three months. Summer said the United States had been listening to conversations between Assange and lawyers while he was in the Ecuadorian embassy in London from 2012 to 2019. Listening. Again, can you imagine if there was a journalist who, and WikiLeaks has exposed a bunch of crimes by the Russian government, by Putin, by China, by everybody, by Trump, that, that notion that he just had it in for the Clintons, he, he'd go to WikiLeaks. First of all, try to find a retraction. They've redacted information to protect people's identities, whistleblowers and stuff, but they have never had to retract anything because they got it wrong. That has never happened. WikiLeaks has never had to retract one single, there's not one news outlet that I can think of anywhere in the world that can make that claim other than WikiLeaks. So imagine now, if he, or just a whistleblowing journalist was being held, imagine if this is how we treated, if the United States government, if Nixon did this 
to Ben Bradley of the Washington Post when he released the Pentagon Papers showing the corruption of Nixon in the Vietnam War and how Nixon, LBJ, Kennedy, uh, back to Eisenhower, all knew about what was going on in Vietnam and didn't do anything about it. That's the Pentagon Papers. The Pentagon Papers, which Senator Mike Gravel read on the floor of the Senate to make them a part of the, the public record. Just, just, what if they treated Ben Bradley this way? He said there was a criminal case in the Spanish courts allegedly, see this is there, allegedly involving Spanish contractors used by the U.S. government and that hooded men broke into offices without giving details. So they just say allegedly, they say without giving details, and they would claim, well, we're, we're, this is just what their lawyer said, but they don't go and investigate it themselves. They could, this information's out there. If they're gonna say that, that Assange's uh, lawyers are saying incorrect information or they're saying base, they're making baseless claims, then they should refute it. But they don't, they just say allegedly without giving details. So you're a news organization, you can't go research to see if this is true or not? I can, I have the internet, so can you. So they just sprinkle this stuff in there. This is State Department tactics. Allegedly, no details. Where are your details? Where are your details? <laughs> this is part of a concerted and avowed war against whistleblowers, including investigative journalists and publishers, Assange's attorney said. The judge denied the request to delay the hearing and said Assange's extradition hearing would go ahead as planned at Belmarsh Magistrates Court in East London in February. Which, his lawyer said, not only is it illegal on the face of the treaty, the U.S. has conducted illegal operations against Assange and his lawyers, which are the subject of a major investigation in Spain. Representing the U.S., lawyer James Lewis said the U.S. would oppose any delay to the proceeding. Find out where James Lewis works. <laughs> and let's see where, what he, what that law firm what they're doing, where they get their money from. Maybe just works for the Department of Justice. That's our tax money paying for this. So I went on the internet to try to find people that were actually there. I found Craig Murray, um, who uh, is a journalist and works, used to work for the UK government. Here's what he wrote. I'm trying to report what I saw at Westminster Magistrate today, but my hands keep shaking with rage, frustration, and sadness to the point I can't type, and my heart keeps going into atrial fib fibrillation. <laughs> I've got myself quite shaken from a dreadful day in Westminster Magistrate's court with Julian. None of the mainstream media reports I have seen come close to what really happened. We'll blog when I recover for a bit and an hour or two. So I'm going to check back on his blog and see he hasn't, as, as of the time of this recording, he hasn't put anything new on it. But I'm going to check back with what he says. Because the only other thing I found was this by Rupley, which is, um, we know, so Rupley is RT, is an, an arm of RT, and they're like their news thing, and this is what they found This is Julian being kind of hauled away. Exclusive footage of Assange in prison van after extradition hearing. I don't know what he's saying. And I don't know why this guy's shining a bright light in his face. So 
So, you know, that's what happened uh, today. So, not surprisingly, what the mainstream media, I just showed you with the mainstream media, how they're saying it. Okay, he, was in, he seemed a little confused, but he looked healthy. Like, what? He's playing a game? So we'll find more from Craig Murray when that comes out, when Craig Murray writes his blog about what actually happened. But um, there was this. <laughs> Tulsi Gabbard has put her life on the line in defense of this country. People can disagree on the issues, but it is outrageous for anyone to suggest that Tulsi is a foreign asset. That is Bernie Sanders in response to what Hillary Clinton said. This woman wrote, finally, now, do Assange. Yeah, Bernie, speak up. It's good you're speaking up in defense of Tulsi, finally, two, three days later. Great, awesome. I talked about that on my live stream. Should you get involved in this fight with Tulsi and Hillary? This is a good way to respond. Great, now do Assange, do Julian Assange, because Tulsi has spoken out for Julian. Bernie needs to as well. Bernie needs to as well. So, thanks for watching the show, everybody. Thanks for getting your news here and not, you see what the corporate media does. So, getting it from here, I appreciate that. They are throttling me. Uh, we've started to creep up a little bit again. We just crossed 54,000 subscribers, which is a good thing, but we, we were stuck at 53,000. We went below 53,000 for like a month. So, stay on top of it. Uh, like and subscribe. You, even if you've subscribed in the past, they've unsubscribed people, hit the bell notification button. I do a uh, live stream every Sunday at 3 p.m. doing the Political Vigilante Game Show live streaming on YouTube Tuesday, October 22nd with Jimmy Dore and Steph Zamorano. That is at 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. Follow me on Twitter at Graham Elwood because I announce when I'm going live. And of course, support me at rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood, which is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform, and patreon.com slash Graham Elwood. And then see the progressive comedy tour. Ron Placone and I from the Jimmy Dore Show uh, do stand-up comedy. Uh, we're going around the world next month. We are in November. We are going to Australia, the 14th um, Melbourne, the 15th Adelaide, November 17th Sydney, and the 22nd we are in Perth. And December 13th, Progressive Comedy Tour comes to Ventura, California. December 14th, we do Hollywood. And then a bunch of dates, Seattle, San Francisco, Orlando, Tucson for 2020. Go to GrahamElwood.com for all the tour dates. Thanks for watching the show.